Isaiah 54 chapter 5th verse For your maker is your husband For your maker is your husband The Lord Almighty is his name Lord Almighty is his name The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer He is called the God of all the earth He is called the God of all the earth Let's all close our eyes and pray to the presence of the Lord We just say only Father you are God who speaks to us You are a great God there is nothing that you cannot do you are a father to us, you are a mother to us, you are a friend to us, you are a brother to us. You are also called a husband to us, Lord. Lord, we believe this, Lord. Speak to us. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God says, for your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is our Redeemer. The God of whole earth is called. We always use the term that God is our Father. How many say God is our Father? Yes? Okay. I preached uh, a brief thing about Maker is your husband in one of the promise was service. How many remember it? How many came to that service? I mean, maybe a couple of people or three or four people. Okay, great. So, Maker, your Maker is your husband. We always talk to the Lord saying that God is my father he's like, he's like a father to me he's like a guide to me he's, a, he's like a mother to me he, he takes care of me and care of me as a mother he takes care of me he, he gives me provides me as a father he, he, he will be with me at all situation of my life like a friend he will be as an elder brother in my life giving this blessing to me, supporting my life, everything we have here. And this particular verse says, the Lord your God is your husband. Your maker is your husband. Your maker is your husband. This is in the same way it is given in the New Testament too in 2 Corinthians 11 chapter 2 verse. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. Yeah. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. I promise you as a bride to Christ. God says He is making a covenant with you and He says He is not going to break the covenant with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Marriage is a deep bond between a husband and wife. Marriage relationship, a relationship between a husband and wife and a mother and a son. I mean a child is considered to be holy relationships in the Bible. Two relationships are considered as holy relationships in the Bible. One relationship is husband and wife. And the second relationship is the relationship between a mother and a child. Two relationships are considered very very important in Bible. And such a relationship God says you are going to be my wife and I am going to be your husband. I am making a covenant with you which I don't forget. What is that? Which I don't forget as people forget as human forget as any best husband or wife forgets God never forgets Amen Hallelujah He says your creator is your husband and he is not going to forget things that he has promised you he is not going to th forget the commandments that he has made with you he is not going to forget you he is going to feed you he is going to protect you he is going to wipe your tears he is going to take care of you throughout your life amen do you believe this amen a god is truthful in what he says sometimes people say i married without knowing i married i am feeling for it why I am married? Why did I make this covenant? I couldn't come out of this covenant. It is such a burden in their hearts. My God doesn't, what is it? Uh, he made a covenant and he is not going to regret for it. People regret. Men regret. Regret for the promises that they have made in their life. But God says, he is making a covenant with you and he is not going to regret for it. Amen. Hallelujah. He has made a covenant with you. He says, your creator is your husband. He is going to take care of everything in your life. Amen. We are going to see few examples in the Bible about husband and wife relationships. We can see about good husbands, bad husbands. We can see about good wives, bad wives. Uh, we can, I hope so you know about Nabal and uh, Abigail. Who was the good one? 
Abigail was a good one. And she took, what to say, the initiative to stop destruction about on her husband. But in the same way, Adam and Eve, what happened? Adam, he did not take the initiative. He said, it is not my fault. It is Eve's fault. So there are different kinds of people in this world. Some people take the blame. Some people put the blame. Our God is a God who takes all your blames and says, I am there for you. I am ready to take everything of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to few, see a few examples from the Bible. First Samuel 4, chapter 5th verse. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. But to Hannah he gave double portion because he loved her though the Lord had closed her womb. Okay. The first husband and wife we are going to see is Elkanah and Hannah. Okay. We all know about the story. There is a woman that is crying. And this husband loved his wife. He did not leave just as let her cry. I will do my job. I remember some person asking me when I talked about characteristics of women. Uh, they told me why don't you talk about the characteristics of men. So today is characteristics of men. It is about love. Loving your wife. Here we can see Hannah crying. Elkanah did not leave her and walk away. Elkanah went to her, talked to her, saying that I love you more than a child. I am like ten times to you. More than a child, I am like a I am ten times as a child to you. He did not say, if you want to cry, you cry, just go. People leave us like that. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we remain silent. What people say? If you want to be silent, be silent. If you want not to talk to me, don't talk to me. Not an issue for me. But here is a husband that comes and talks to his wife. Comes and tries to convince her. Maybe it is a temporary convincement that Elkanah is giving Hannah. But my God is there who comes and wipes your tears and says, There is permanent peace for you. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a God who comes to you and says there is permanent peace in your life. He is a God who loves you. Not like any other person. He just walks away from your place. If you want him to cry, just cry. He is not a God who is going to walk away. He comes to you and says there is something that is lagging. Whatever happens, I am your portion. I am ten times more than, more than anything that you desire in your life. I, am, I can bless you. I can change every shortcomings in your life into a complete portion. Do you believe this? Amen. Hallelujah. My God, Jesus Christ, as a husband, He loves you and He says He is going to bless you with twice the amount of blessing. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. If Elkanah can bless his wife with twice the amount of blessing, God can definitely bless us too. Amen. Hallelujah. Your creator is your husband. Your creator is your husband. We are to be as a, a worthy, holy sacrifice as a bride towards Jesus Christ. In the same way God says, as a bride, as a husband, he is going to wipe your tears. As a husband, he is going to give twice the amount of blessing. He is not going to walk away as any other people. He is not going to walk away as a father or a mother. He is not going to walk away as a friend, not as a brother. But as a husband, he is going to be in your tough times. Do you believe this? Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever situation may happen in your life, but still God says, I am there for you. Don't worry. Whatever shortcomings is there, my things are your things. My things are your things. I, God is the most rich God. Our God is the most rich God. Do you believe this? Yes. Amen. My God is the most rich God. He has everything in a sense. He created every beautiful things, every riches in this world. The same God says, why are you crying for some money? Why are you coming crying for some shortcomings in your life? God says, my things are your things. My things are your things. Your problem is mine. God is not going to walk away from your life. God says he's going to come to you and talk to you. He's going to convince you. He's going to give peace in your life. He's going to give double portion of blessing in your life. He's going to wipe off your tears. Amen. Hallelujah. And secondly, we are going to see about one more person, Dr. Ruth, second chapter, 9th and 10th verse. 
Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars that the men have filled. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Here we see about uh, two persons, Boaz and Ruth. They were not married yet, but they were about to marry. And what happens over here? Boaz promises Ruth, no one is going to touch you. Boaz promises Ruth that no one is going to touch you. Everything that you need is going to come to you. No one is going to touch you. Everything that you need is going to come to you. Whatever the person, however big official is there, no one is going to touch you because you got favor in my sight. Amen. Hallelujah. The God's promise to you is that He's not only going to wipe off your tears, not only going to give you peace, He also promises you that no one is going to touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. Your husband is there as a strength to you. Your husband is there as a shield to you. And God promises you that no man can touch you. No devil can touch you. Nothing that is creating problems in your life can come in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. My creator is my husband. He is going to make sure that enemy is not going to come near you. The enemy, enemy activities are not going to come near you. He's going to guard you. He's going to protect you. He's going to make sure that you are comfortable. God is there with you so that you will feel comfortable. Amen. Hallelujah. He will make sure that nothing, enemy activities doesn't come near you. He will make sure that everything is alright around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, God is a great God. He can do anything out of nothing. He when when Boaz can give such a uh, what is it, a promise to Ruth, God can definitely give that promise to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Your creator is your husband. He says he holds you in a right hand and he does everything that you want in your life. He is your protector, he is your guide. He knows where to take and what not to take you. If you are under his hands, if you don't break the laws, if you don't break the woes that you are given to the Lord, definitely God will make sure that nothing goes wrong in your life and you will feel comfortable all throughout your life. Amen. Hallelujah. First I said, your husband is there for you, who loves you, who, who wipes off your tears and he is going to give double portion of blessing to you. Secondly I said, your husband is make sure that no one touches you and you feel comfortable. Thirdly, your husband is there. He listens to you. He listens to you very carefully. He listens to each and every word that you speak. Here are some women. She asked the right things to her husband and her husband did not say no to it. He listened to it very carefully and he answered it. Here we can see in the next verse, coming verse, we can see that they built a room in that place and there came Elisa and stayed over there and things happened in their life. There was some shortcomings, she did not have a child and she was blessed with the child, everything happened. What is my point is, the husband over here listens to his wife. Husband listens to his wife. I am not going to ask a question, how many husbands listen to your wife? But anyway, ask yourself the question, how many of you listen to your wife? A question is later that whether they are asking right things or wrong things. You can do right things, sometimes you, must, may, you may not do few things. But still, the duty of a husband is to listen. A God, being a hard husband, and God promises us, He is going to listen to each and every word that you pray to Him. Do you believe this? Amen. Hallelujah. As a duty of a husband, God promises each and every one of us that He is going to listen to each and every word that you pray to Him. But still, your Creator, your husband, listens to your prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. My God's promise to each and every one of us is He is a God who listens to us. He is a God who listens each and every word that we commit in you in His name. Whatever we speak in His name, He is a God who listens to us. Make sure that you ask right things in the presence of the Lord and definitely you will get those things in your life. Amen. 
Hallelujah. For example, there is, if you want money, where you have to go? You have to go for your bank, right? If you want to withdraw money, you have to go for bank. If where you have saved, while it is saved, you can go and get it. If you want to get the blessings from the Lord, you must have saved something for Him. You have saved, you must have saved something for Him. You, have, you must have done something for Him. If you have done something for Him, definitely God will multiply it and give it more than you expected. Amen. Hallelujah. You ask in God's name and God says He is going to multiply things and give it to you. We, Solomon asked just wisdom. But God gave Solomon riches and also honor. Honor and riches came along with wisdom for him. When you ask right things in the name of the Lord, God says, He is going to bless you abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. Your creator is your husband. Wives, ask your husband meaningful things. Husband, listen to your wife. Each and every believer, ask to the Lord meaningful things. God is listening to each and every word that you say in your prayers. And God says, if you ask right things, He is going to multiply and give you. If you don't ask right things, God says He is not going to answer your prayers. Amen. It's as simple as that. Amen. I'm not going to come here to say God is going to answer every prayers. If you ask right things in the presence of the Lord, definitely God will answer you. If you're not going to ask right things, God cannot answer your prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God increased life. God increased wisdom. God increased knowledge. I hope so. Everyone wants God to dwell in your house. As I said, as a Korea, as a husband, he starts, he loves you, and he gives double the portion of blessing. He wipes off your tears. He gives peace in your life. Secondly, I said, God is going to protect you. He is going to make you feel comfortable. Enemies are not going to touch you. Whatever you need in your life, God is going to give you. Thirdly, God is listening to you. He carefully listens to you. He is going to answer your prayers. He is, uh, when you ask right things in the presence of the Lord, definitely God is going to answer. Fourthly, God says, I am going to dwell with you. Amen. Hallelujah. I am going to live along with you. I am going to live. The presence of the Lord is going to be in your house. The presence of the Lord is going to be in your family. The presence of the Lord is going to be wherever you go. Do you want this? Amen. Hallelujah. David says beautifully, Even though I walk through the valley of death, I don't fear evil because you are looking at me, Lord. Even though I go to hell and sleep, you are there. Wherever I go, you are there. There is nothing that, is, that I can hide from you. There is nothing that can be hidden from the Lord. Remember that God wants to dwell with you. God wants to be in your life. We always know about, I don't know whether you know the story, there was a rich man who had three storage building in his house. And God came to his house, knocked the door. And he was very happy to invite God into his house. Then he said, Lord, this is your room. Please stay over here. And he went to the top floor and he slept. And on that night, he had a lot of problems, a lot of, what to say, devil temptations, the devil, uh, bad dreams, etc. And he came to Jesus Christ and asked to the Lord, You are in my house, still why it's happening to me? Jesus Christ answered him, you have just given me this. You have just given me this room. I cannot come out of this. You have just given me this room. And he said, Okay Lord, you take the whole ground floor. I will be on the first floor. Then what happens? Same thing repeated. Again he came to the Lord and said, Why this is happening? The Lord answered him, you just gave me the ground floor. You just gave me the ground floor. I can only take care of the things that are present over here. 
here, not in the things that are happening over there. Then he understood what he must give. Sometimes what happens in our life is, we sometimes give 50% to the Lord, 10% to the Lord, 20% to the Lord, 10% maybe even less, and says, Lord, I have given you, but still why problems are coming in my life? Why things are coming in my life? God asks you a question. Is the same problem coming when you are in the presence of the Lord or when you are going outside the presence of the Lord? We come inside the church. We give this church time, this hall alone to the Lord. We go outside, we forget the Lord. We say, Lord, this is the time that I give to you. You be with me in this church. But when we go outside the hall, Lord is not with us. When we go to the outside world, Lord is not with us. Sometimes we give 50% of our life into God's hands. We give every time that, that we are, we are like alone or something like that, maybe 50% of your 12 hours of your life to God. But other 12 hours, I say, Lord, this is my personal time. This is my personal time. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to be with my friends, I can do anything in my life. And God says, I am controlling this 50% of your life. The other 50% is in your hands. Don't complain about the problems of the other 50% in your life. You understand me? God says, I want to be with you 100% of your life. Only when you give 100% authority to the Lord, God can take care of everything in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever, even in my office, even when I'm with friends, even when I go outside, even when I'm alone, remember that you are given 100% to the Lord. Remember that God wants to dwell with you, not only in church, not only in your house, but each and every place that you go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The God says, I want to dwell with you. I want to live with you. When God lives with us, definitely there will be change in our life. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. If God is going to live with us, definitely there is going to be change. Turn to Genesis 39, chapter 20, first verse. The Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him a favor in the sight of keeper of the prison. The thing is, even when Joseph was in prison, even when Joseph was as a slave, God was still with him. Brothers left. Father and mother left, friends left, God did not leave. Amen? Hallelujah! Your creator, your husband, promises you that he is going to live with you all throughout your life. He is going to reign with you all throughout your life. It is a promise that God gives you. Wherever you go, whatever things that you place, even in prison, God will show you revelations. Even if you are as a slave, God will be with you. Whatever you do will prosper. Enemy, the other people, Gentile people will see that there are beautiful things that are things done by the Lord in your life. Whatever you touch, that will prosper because God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. My creator, your husband wants to live with you. He wants to take care of every part of your life. When you give 100% to the Lord, definitely God will make sure that he will multiply things in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And God says, you are expected to submit to your creator. As you submit to the God, you are expected to submit to your creator. And God says, he is going to control your life. Creator is your husband. He is going to change your life. He is going to protect you. He is going to wipe your tears. He is going to live with you. He, is going, he says that no enemies is going to touch you. And he also says that God is there where no man can do. God can do things in your life. Amen. So I'll be on my feet. Lord, you be my husband. Lord, I must be a pure virgin before your sight, Lord. Lord, I must be a pure virgin before your sight, Lord. Every eyes be closed. Every eyes be closed. Talk to the Lord. Everyone talk to the Lord. You can do greater things in my life. You can do greater things in my life. 
my creator is my husband my creator is my husband he might be my dear he's going to live with you for eternity he's going to take care of you he's going to protect you he's going to listen to you he's also make sure that enemy doesn't touch you what we must do we must make sure that we are in god's presence we must make sure that we are different from other people god give me that ability lord i should not flow with the world i should not flow with the stream of this world lord lord i should show a difference in my life yes you show a difference in my life lord as a wife must submit to the husband lord i submit to you lord let's all raise our hands and say this everyone together lord full full of my life wholeness hundred percent of my body is yours lord I submit to you, Lord. I submit to you, Lord. I submit to you, Lord. Look at the Lord and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. It's your time. It's your time. Do you need not want someone to lead you? Talk to the Lord. 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 Chennai Hope Yeji Sabayin Aradhanai Nerangal Nyai Chikkalamai Mudal Aradhanai Kalai Aindu Manikkum Yerandavadu Aradhanai Kalai Yelu Manikkum மூன்றாவது ஆராதனை காலை எட்டு நாற்பத்தி ஐந்து மணிக்கும் நான்காம் ஆராதனை காலை பத்து முப்பது மணிக்கும் ஆங்கில ஆராதனை காலை ஒன்பது மணிக்கும் வாலிபர் ஆராதனை மாலை தெலுங்கு ஆராதனை மாலை ஐந்து மணிக்கும் மற்றும் மாலை ஆராதனை ஆறு முப்பது மணிக்கும் நடைபெறுகிறது அதோடு வெள்ளிக்கிழமை தோறும் உபவாச ஜமம் காலை பத்து மணிக்கும் சனிக்கிழமை தோறும் அற்புத சுகமளிக்கும் ஆராதனை மாலை ஆறு முப்பது மணிக்கும் நடைபெற உள்ளது இவ்வாராதனைகளில் பங்கு பெற்று தேவ ஆசிர்வாதங்களை பெற்று செல்ல உங்கள் அனைவரையும் அன்புடன் அழைக்கின்றோம் அன்பானவர்களே உங்கள் ஜப தேவைகளுக்கும் மேலும் ஆலோசனைகளுக்கும் நீங்கள் எங்களோடு தொடர்பு கொள்ள வேண்டிய முகவரி நம்பிக்கை ஏஜி சபை என் ஒன்று டாக்டர் ராதாகிருஷ்ணன் திரு பள்ளிக்கரணை சென்னை ஆறு ஒன்று பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் மேலும் விபரங்களுக்கு தொடர்பு கொள்ள வேண்டிய செல்போன் எண்கள் ஒன்பது எட்டு நான்கு ஒன்று மூன்று ஒன்பது பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் நான்கு எட்டு ஒன்பது ஐந்து ஐந்து ஒன்று ஒன்று எட்டு ஒன்று ஒன்று ஒன்பது எட்டு ஒன்பது ஒன்பது ஆறு இரண்டு ஐந்து மூன்று இரண்டு பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்று ஒன்பது மற்றும் ஒன்பது எட்டு நான்கு ஒன்று இரண்டு ஒன்பது எட்டு பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்பது அவர்கள் பாடிய ஆடியோ சிடி ஆல்பம் வெளிவந்துள்ளது இளைய தலைமுறைகளுக்கு நம்பிக்கை ஊட்டும் வித்தியாசமான ஆல்பம் தொடர்புக்கு ஒன்பது ஏழு ஒன்று பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் ஆறு ஒன்று பூஜ்ஜியம் ஆறு இரண்டு அப்போஸ்தல தலைமைத்துவ மாநாடு இரண்டாயிரத்தி பதினாறு சென்னை இந்தியா நாள் நவம்பர் முப்பது முதல் டிசம்பர் இரண்டு வரை காலை ஒன்பது முப்பது மணி முதல் மாலை இரண்டு மணி வரை நடைபெறுகிறது நடைபெறும் இடம் சால்வேசன் ஆர்மி ஹெச்ஆர்டி மையம் எண் எட்டு பெரியண்ணா மேஸ்திரி தெரு வேப்பேரி நெடுஞ்சாலை பெரிய மேடு சென்னை ஆறு பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் சிறப்பு தேவ செய்தி அளிப்பவர் அப்போஸ்தலர் தாமு நாயுடு அவர்கள் தென்னாப்பிரிக்கா தொடர்புக்கு டாக்டர் லின் ஈனாக் மாரிஸ் அண்ட் கிரேஸ் அவர்கள் செல்போன் நம்பர் ஒன்பது ஐந்து ஆறு ஆறு ஒன்று நான்கு ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்பது ஏழு மற்றும் ஒன்பது எட்டு நான்கு பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் ஆறு ஐந்து ஒன்பது இரண்டு ஏழு இந்த மாநாட்டில் நீங்கள் கலந்து கொள்ள விரும்பினால் ரூபாய் இருநூறு மட்டுமே செலுத்தி உடனே முன்பதிவு செய்து கொள்ளும்படி உங்களை அன்புடன் அழைக்கிறோம்